Good evening, everyone. Thanks for wrapping up your week with us. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, a lot of news across Billings tonight. We begin with crime. It's a problem that nearly everyone is concerned about in Billings, but would you be willing to pay more in taxes to do something about it? Well, that's the question Billings homeowners face as they prepare to vote on the upcoming safety mill levy. Tonight, Q2's Russ Riesinger takes a closer look at where that money would go and why city officials say it's needed. Ballots for the public safety meal levy should now be in your mailbox. It's a $7.1 million ask by the city of Billings that will raise your taxes if you're a homeowner. But supporters say it's essential as Billings continues to grow and crime continues to increase. The push is on with city officials taking their campaign for the public safety meal levy to the streets this week. I lost track of the number of positive horn honks and thumbs up, so it uh, seems to be really well received, so that's encouraging. It's impossible to tell if that's any indication of which way Billings voters are leaning when it comes to the levy, but Billings Mayor Bill Cole says one thing is clear. Our crime problem is out of control. The mayor says violent crime has increased twofold in the last decade in Billings, with a record 22 homicides last year. We need more police officers on the street. We, more, we need more evidence clerks. Uh, civilians to support the police. It's going to do that. Also, our city attorneys. Uh, this will help fund several additional attorneys and paralegals. Right now, our domestic violence prosecutor has more than 1,200 cases per year. The American Bar Association standard is 400 cases maximum. If passed, the biggest chunk of the levy money, just under $2.5 million, would go to police, enough to add 28 new full-time positions. $1.5 million would be invested in the fire department, much of that for the medical response team. Seven legal positions would be added, as well as an additional judge and staff for courts, three code enforcement officers, and $415,000 a year would be spent on mental health and substance abuse services. The levy would raise taxes on a home valued at $217,000 by about 100 bucks a year. Well, Billings voters came through in the clutch last year to help plug a deficit in the budget by repealing and replacing the previous levy to generate more money. It may be a tougher sell this year. Very clear that they were not going to be able to uh, get any additional police officers or firefighters. This actually gets us more resources to make a difference to bring those crime numbers uh, uh, down. They're really in the trenches. They're addressing a lot of big city issues in our, in our community. And I really feel like uh, we really need to back them. We need to support them, give them uh, uh, people in the background to help them, uh, provide funding for whatever needs they have, because helping them helps our city. And while no one wants to pay more in taxes, city officials say they're handcuffed when it comes to finding other ways of funding. So, uh, we don't have a sales tax. We don't get an income tax. Uh, we do get some dollars from the federal government and the state, but not very much. So uh, there's no free lunch. And when the problem gets to be as bad as it is today uh, and uh, the problem increases, we need those additional resources. We'll be taking a closer look in the next two weeks at why the people you depend on for protection say this levy is so important, as well as hearing from those on both sides of the issue. By the way, those ballots must be turned in to the elections office by November 2nd. In Billings, I'm Russ Friesinger reporting for MTN News. Zoo Montana will soon start on a new waterfowl project. The Nile is at the Metro Park for the next two weekends, and we start with a new leader at one of the Billings hospitals. St. Vincent Healthcare has a new president. SCL Health announced that Jen Alderfer will lead the hospital and the Montana region. She has been president for SCL Health's Good Samaritan Medical Center and Transformation Officer in Lafayette, Colorado. The hospital has been among the top 1% for three straight years, according to the U.S. News and World Report. Aldefer will start her new job on November 29th. Zoo Montana received a grant to complete its foster waterfowl range. The Sunderland Foundation in Kansas contributed $200,000 to the $1.1 million project. This gives the zoo 100% of the funding needed. Construction will start this fall and is scheduled to be complete in the middle of next year. Saddle up for this story. The Northern International Livestock Exposition, or the Nile, started. Today's events featured livestock weigh-ins and the Run in the Rims barrel race. 
The Nile Trade Show and Nile Ranch Rodeo Finals are scheduled for Friday. Several events are on tap next week, including the PRCA Rodeos Tough Enough to Wear Pink and Wrangler Patriot Night. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Also today, Montana U.S. Senator John Tester is trying to help you know where your beef comes from. The senator was in Great Falls this morning, and MTN's Asher Lind was there to bring us this report. Where is it? Here we go. If you're like me, you probably spend time looking for beef products in your fridge, and now there's a push in Congress to reinstate country of origin labeling on beef products. Senator John Tester is advocating for the bill so Montana consumers know exactly what they're putting on their plate. Country of origin labeling, or COOL, exists for other products, but there is a bipartisan group advocating for the beef industry to reinstate COOL so that American and Montanan consumers know exactly where their beef is from. Senator John Tester spoke in Great Falls Friday about how Montana and the beef industry go hand in hand, given that cows outnumber people in the state and many ranchers in the state supply high quality beef. A few years ago, I couldn't come up here and say we have a bipartisan bill. Now I can. The bottom line is, is that uh, we've got an opportunity, I think, better than we've had in the past to get this bill across the finish line and get it to the president's desk. Tester has been working with Montana Farmers Union, who also advocates to level the playing field and to force companies to not be as misleading with their labeling, as they say it will hurt consumers in the long run. Brazil has now had three mad cows. And, and these mad cows, if you eat that meat, um, you risk getting a very, very serious disease. So the consumer thinks they're buying U.S. beef, but they're really buying Brazilian beef. Locally, Central Avenue Meats has been seeing a beef industry where prices have fluctuated slightly but still maintain a busy schedule and agree that cool labeling is something that will help customers with buying their meat. We generally feel like it uh, is going to be first and foremost up to the customers to find out where their meat comes from, and that's gonna be the only sure way to know that they're buying local products. We're in favor of just more transparency in that process, so that's where I see that country of origin labeling increasing the transparency. The beef industry is a large part of Montana, and with cool labeling, more people can have more information about the food they are buying. In Great Falls, Asher Lined, MTN News. Horses, Spirits, Healing is a program that began in 2016. Its goal, to help veterans in whatever way they can. Everyone that I meet and see, I say, if you get a chance, come on out here. Animals are amazing, and this program is proof. Here, just northwest of Billings, horses have the power to heal, thanks to this program that helps veterans who may be dealing with mental health issues. People can get such a huge benefit from being with horses. It's great for um, your mental health. It helps reduce stress levels. Just being around the horses increases people's dopamine levels. Um, riding can also have a great impact as far as physical health, helping people build muscles, core strength. The program works directly with the VA and over the last year logged 1,800 veteran sessions. It aims to be inclusive, allowing veterans and their families of all genders, ages, and ability levels to take part. But to see these veterans come, and they come sometimes in slump-shouldered and pretty unhappy, and then at the end of the day, see them walk away, stand and stick straight and with a grin on their face, and they'll say, so when can we come back? Newell Schaub served in the Army for 21 years and has suffered from some mental health issues. Since getting involved with the program in March, he has been there five days a week. You, you can't find a better place like this. If you, if you need a little help, it, it is great. That's, I can't, like I said, I can't say enough about them. A place where problems and challenges grow just a bit smaller, all thanks to horses with the power to heal. Since it began, the program has helped over 300 veterans. In Yellowstone County, Brandon Warren, MTN News. Still ahead on your MTN 530 News here on Q2, a hidden Montana gem is now seeking a spot on the National Register of Historic Places. We'll take a look inside next. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Well, Montana is full of 